The fourth and final class of biological molecules that we're going to focus on are lipids, also known as fats. Now, lipids, just like proteins, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates, are very important biological molecules that play many different roles inside our cells and inside our body. To basically demonstrate the importance of lipids, let's focus in this lecture on the cell membrane. So, the cell membrane is a structure that encloses every single cell inside our body, and it consists predominantly of lipids. Now, what exactly are some functions of the cell membrane? Well, the cell membrane has four important functions. Function number one is it creates a protective barrier between the outside and the inside environment of the cell. It basically prevents toxins and other pathogenic agents from actually entering the cell and it prevents molecules from actually spontaneously exiting the cell in the first place. Now, function number two is that in transport. As we'll see in just a moment, within a cell membrane, we have proteins. And these proteins basically create these channels or pumps that basically allow the selective movement of certain things outside or into that cell. So this is a semi-permeable membrane and what that means is the cell actually picks and chooses what to allow into the cell and what to not allow into the cell. Function number three is that in signal transduction. What that means is certain molecules, for instance hormones, can actually interact with the outside portion of the cell membrane and that will create many different types of signals and processes inside the cell, as we'll see in future lectures. And function number four, energy storage. So as we'll see in just a moment, there's actually an electric difference. So there's a charge difference between the outside and the inside of the cell. And what that creates is an electric potential difference, a voltage difference. So there are electric field lines that exist within the cell membrane. And what that means is there is a certain amount of energy that is stored with that is stored within the electric field that exists inside the cell membrane. So four important functions act as a protective barrier, basically acts in transport, in signal transduction, as well as energy storage. Now, every single cell inside our body contains this cell membrane, and all these cell membranes have the same properties. So let's examine what these properties are. Property number one is these cell membranes are relatively thin and they enclose that entire cell. They create a closed boundary. Now, the fact that the cell membranes are thin basically means they only consist of two layers of molecules, two layers of lipids, as we'll see in a future lecture. Now, on top of that, inside the cell, inside eukaryotic cells, such as cells found inside our body, we also have individual organelles that themselves contain membranes. So, things like the nucleus, the Golgi complex, the endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes, peroxisomes, all these organelles also contain their own membrane that basically plays the same type of role as the cell membrane found around the actual cell. Now, property number two, cell membranes are made up of not only lipids, but also proteins and carbohydrates. And the additional proteins and carbohydrates basically diversify the functionality of that cell membrane. Now, depending on the type of cell and the activity of cell, the ratio of lipids to proteins to carbohydrates basically varies. Now, property number three, the cell membrane consists of a phospholipid bilayer, and that can be seen in the following diagram. Now, generally speaking, as we'll see in a future lecture, lipids are amphiphatic molecules, and what that means is they contain both hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions, nonpolar and polar regions. Now, one part of that phospholipid found inside the membrane is polar, and that is known as the polar head, and these are shown in blue. And the polar heads basically orient themselves to the outside or the inside because the outside and inside contains an aqueous polar environment. But the nonpolar hydrophobic region shown in red of these lipids 
basically aggregate at the center of that cell membrane. And as we can see from the diagram, the nonpolar region of the membrane basically predominates and that makes the membrane predominantly nonpolar. And so what that implies is the cell membrane basically serves as a barrier for polar and charged molecules. If polar or charged molecules want to make their way into the cell or outside the cell, they have to use these channels, these pumps, we call proteins, as we'll see in just a moment. So the lipid molecules are amphiphatic. They contain both polar and nonpolar regions in an aqueous environment, which basically means in a polar environment that consists of water, the polar regions of the lipids interact with the environment while the nonpolar regions aggregate inside the membrane. This makes the membrane mostly hydrophobic and it serves as a barrier to polar and charged molecules. Now, what that also means, if a nonpolar molecule, such as a cholesterol molecule, for instance, wants to make its way across the cell membrane, it can easily do so because the cell membrane is predominantly nonpolar. Property number four, the cell membrane is, is uh, held together by non-covalent interactions. Now, if we examine any one of these individual molecules inside the cell membrane, for instance, we examine the protein molecule, the protein molecule itself, the atoms in the protein molecule are held together by covalent bonds. But the individual molecules, so for instance, the lipids and the proteins inside the cell membrane are held together by non-covalent interactions, intermolecular bonds. And what that means is, although these intermolecular bonds are weaker than the covalent bonds, because we have so many of these intermolecular bonds, the collective aggregate of all these bonds basically makes that membrane an effective barrier. So the individual lipid and protein molecules are held together by intermolecular bonds. And although they are weak, in, uh, although they are weak compared to the covalent bonds that actually hold the atoms in any one of these molecules, the collective aggregate of all the forces make the membrane an effective barrier. Function or property number five is the membrane is not rigid. It is not stationary. It is fluid-like, and that's because of these relatively weak non-covalent interaction. So basically these proteins and these phospholipids, the lipid molecules, can move along the membrane without any problem. So there's a constant state of motion among all these different molecules in the lateral direction on that cell membrane. So due to relatively weak intermolecular bonds, lipids, and most proteins are in a constant state of lateral motion. The reason I say most proteins is because some of these proteins are actually attached to other things and so they don't actually move. Property number six, proteins diversify the properties of cell membranes and this is what I mentioned earlier. So basically proteins create many additional functions. For instance, it's the proteins that play a role in transport and they actually selectively choose what enters the cell and what doesn't. So there are many types of transport proteins. For instance, we have pumps that use energy. We also have channels and so forth. And we'll discuss these in much more detail in a future lecture. Now, proteins are the molecules that basically act in signal transduction. So, for instance, some type of hormone can bind onto a protein, and that's the protein that will create that signal inside the cell that will lead to some type of process inside the cell. So, proteins function as transporters, they also function as enzyme receptors, and they mediate energy storage. For instance, one will discuss the electron transport chain the, uh, the electron transport chain is basically a series of proteins that are found on the inner membrane of the mitochondria 
And what the electron transport chain does is it ultimately establishes a proton gradient. And what that means is the electron transport chain are these proteins that create an electric potential difference between the two sides of the membrane of the mitochondria and that stores energy across the cell membrane. So proteins are important because they mediate energy storage as well as act as enzymes, receptors and transporters. So number seven, which is what we mentioned earlier and just a moment ago, membranes are polar. And what that means is compared to the outside of the cell, the inside of the cell basically differs in the charge. And because we have a separation of charge between the two sides of the membrane from basic physics, we know that that creates, establishes an electric potential difference, an electric dipole moment. So there is a dipole moment that exists between the two sides, will have electric field, that, uh, um, an electric field that will exist within this region and that will basically store energy within in that region. It will give the membrane a voltage difference. And number eight, membranes are not symmetric structures. So if we compare one side of the cell membrane to the opposing side of the cell membrane, we'll see that there is a certain asymmetry to it. And that's because we have a different density and distribution of proteins and carbohydrates between different regions along the cell membrane. And so the density and distribution of the proteins is not symmetric along the cell membrane, which means the two faces of the membrane are never actually the same. 